But the difference is that he can live it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we think about the word of God, think about what the word says. It says the spirit of God has made me. Hallelujah. He has made us. Each and every one of us. Hallelujah. And it's a breath of the almighty that gives us life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The breath of the almighty gives us life. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father. For this is the air that we breathe, oh, Father. We thank you and we praise you, oh, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe.
going to continue on in, in our series of, of God heals and, and accepts the rejected. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. Yes, God heals and accepts the rejected. We're talking about the importance of, of recognizing it and, and using that uh, uh, the example that Jesus gave us as the how to, to respond to rejection. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you can identify with being rejected in one way, shape, or another? Come on now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the thing is, we can call it a bunch of, a bunch of other different things. Hallelujah. But when it boils down to it, it's, it's rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. In Hebrew, the rejection is defined as to hinder, to hold back, forbid, disallow, restrain, frustrate, make adverse, discourage. Is transfer translated as to make to non-effect in the mighty name of Jesus. Its primitive root is to refuse, forbid, to sway, or, or neutralize in the name of Jesus. In the Greek, rejection is defined as repudiation, to throw away from oneself, to cast off a losing, a, a lost in the name of Jesus. And I know that when we think about these words, hallelujah, that, that we felt them at, at one place or, or time and another, maybe even now, in the mighty name of Jesus, rejection, hallelujah. We discussed the revelation that, that rejection leads to unforgiveness and unforgiveness leads to bitterness and, and how it's all based on a lie in the name of Jesus, meaning that our perception and or, or the lies of the enemy can cause us to feel rejection, hallelujah. Hallelujah can cause us to, to, to feel rejection or to, to respond from that, that place of rejection when we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lie in the name of Jesus. We talked about how Jesus experienced rejection from family. He experienced rejection from his community, from, from those who claim to love them. And, and today we're going to be talking about how he experienced a rejection from his father in the name of Jesus. Previously we talked about with regards to Jesus being rejected by those who claimed to love him. We talked about how he was rejected from, from Judas and, and Peter, both of whom had close relationship with him. Both received a great commission to, to spread the gospel. Both witnessed miracles. Both commanded, hallelujah, both communed with Jesus, hallelujah, through the baking of bread, hallelujah. Both of whom had their feet washed by Jesus. Both of whom cast out demons in the mighty name of Jesus. One of whom betrayed uh, Jesus to the, to, to the point that, that it resulted in, in Jesus being whipped and, and experiencing agony on the cross. And it resulted in him being mocked in the name of Jesus. The other denied Jesus, uh, denied knowing Jesus three times. Hallelujah. One knew Jesus as Lord. One received forgiveness from Jesus and, and, and was restored in the name of Jesus. But the other one knew Jesus as, as, as a servant. He knew him as, as a servant. He ended up hung, hanging himself, hallelujah, hallelujah, for his betrayal. I want to say that again because it's important. One knew Jesus as Lord. Mind you, they both walked with Jesus. One knew him as Lord. One knew him who he truly was in the mighty name of Jesus. And he, he rejected him. He rejected, denied knowing him for self-preservation. Right. One rejected him for money in the mighty name of Jesus. The one who rejected him for money knew him as a servant. So he knew, he knew that Jesus was a great servant in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But he hung himself for his betrayal in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But both of whom Jesus responded the same way. He responded with love. He told us, as he told each and every one of us, uh, to, 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 to love our enemies and to bless those who persecute us. In the mighty name of Jesus. How many know that God does not tell us to do something that he has not empowered us to do? Hallelujah. It doesn't mean it's easy. But He, if he told us to do it, we can do it in the name of Jesus. We've seen how Jesus, hallelujah, although he, when he was being betrayed, how, yes, he felt that. It said that, that, that it disturbed his spirit in the name of Jesus. It has disturbed his spirit, but he knew that there was a greater purpose behind it in the name of Jesus. He knew that.
that it was a greater purpose behind it. He knew who he was and did not allow the rejection to stop him, hallelujah, from fulfilling his mission. Instead, it was, it was part of the plan. It was used at, at to propel him into his purpose on earth in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Rejection in the name of Jesus. Again, today we're going to be talking about Jesus being uh, rejected from the Father. And, and honestly, I knew, and, and you guys hear me often say this, but I knew that when I began this series that, that there would be serious, that there would be opposition. And, and we know, yes, there certainly was, and there probably will be, but you know what? Hey, oh well, so what? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So again, as always, I continually, I encourage everyone to remain prayerful, to remain uh, joyful, to relax. And to press in because you know it's part of the course hallelujah as God's children we have to know accept and recognize that we are targets in the mighty name of Jesus we are targets of the enemy because of who we are in the name of Jesus the enemy is the father of lies and he does not want us to apprehend the truth because therein lies our power think about that Hallelujah. But knowing and understanding who we are in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, we can be a target. Hallelujah. Again, I like I like that. <laughs> I know you guys have heard me talk about this, this story before, but, but the matrix is just a powerful example. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't until the, the main character realized who he was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he was able to stand and, and hold off all, all, of, all of the bullets. Hallelujah. That was coming at him in the mighty name of Jesus. But the enemy tried all the long time to, to stop him from recognizing who he was in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's the same with us. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we think about, uh, uh, about rejection, we, we can, we can just, just imagine that rejection actually uh, entered into the world because, because two people decided that they were going to reject God's command. So it started way back in, way back then, at the very beginning, when Adam and Eve decided they were going to reject God's command. They did a turning face, uh, eternal ex uh, rejection. They were placed, uh, they, 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 they experienced a separation from the Father. Hallelujah. And when we were born, we experienced that same thing. We were born into that separation. Hallelujah. But because of Jesus the Christ, we have been redeemed in the mighty name of Jesus. We have been redeemed. He took on that all on himself for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now what does redeemed mean? Redeemed is to buy back, to accept, to choose. Hallelujah. It's the opposite of rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. So by the power of God, of the gospel, each and one of us have been accepted by God. Hallelujah. Each and every one of us have a spirit of adoption in the mighty name of Jesus. Mind you, I am going somewhere. It's good for us. We, we have to know this foundation. Hallelujah. Yep. Romans 8 and 15. Hallelujah. I encourage you to either turn there or to write it down. Hallelujah. Romans, the 8th chapter. And the 15th verse, hallelujah. Romans 8, 15. It says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a permanent and a binding acceptance from God. Hallelujah. A permanent and a binding acceptance. My brothers and sisters, one thing, we, we've been doing this, this study, and we know, again, we've, we've done the Who I Am statements for the past couple of years um, 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 in ministry, and, and, and now our beauties, our young, our young girls are going through each one of them, each, each just individually. We're, we're taking our time and, 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 and walking through them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we look at the word, we talk about that binding acceptance. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ, we have been accepted by God. It's not nothing that we can do, hallelujah, to change that. Hallelujah. Other than denying Jesus. And, and, and so, so in other words, because we have accepted Jesus the Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, although, yes, we may mess up, and yes, we do. Although we may, we may sway and we may do all of the things, hallelujah, and yes, there are consequences for that. 
There's consequences, good and bad, for everything. But it does not change who we are. It does not change that we have been accepted by Christ. We don't work for it. We don't earn. There's no amount of praying that we can do for it. Hallelujah. There's no amount of acting holy or this having this facade. There's nothing, nothing that we can do for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's not a works thing. Hallelujah. But it's done based on our faith because we have accepted Jesus in Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. We know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Turn to Romans 8. We're already in Romans. Go drop down. Romans 8, 38 and 39. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There's nothing that can separate us. Hallelujah. Man's rejection is made light, so small and light. Hallelujah. Of the truth that through the gospel we have God's eternal love and acceptance unconditionally. Hallelujah. Through the gospel, we have God's eternal love and acceptance unconditionally. But that redemption, we have to know that, that yes, it came at a cost. It came at a cost, but it's not a cost to us. It came at a cost. It came, the, the cost was paid, hallelujah, through Jesus the Christ on the cross. He took that up in the mighty name of Jesus. He did it all for us, and it's us for, to us but, uh, individually to know it and to, and to understand it so we can apprehend it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy would like for each and every one of us to think that, that, that if we do something a certain way, uh, 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 that, um, th that there's condemnation on us in the mighty name of Jesus. He likes to use that as a way to, to, to keep us down and try to oppress us in the mighty name of Jesus. But there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Again, it doesn't mean that we do not experience the consequences of our actions. Just like as, as a parent. Hallelujah. As, as a parent, you may chastise your child, but that does not change them from being yours. Well, you know, it does not change that. There is nothing that can stop you in the mighty name of Jesus. You may even turn your back on your parent or your, or your child, but you know what? Hey, the bloodline is there. You can do what you want to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can even disown them if you want to, legally, in the world. But it does not change the fact that that's your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is on the cross. That Jesus experienced the, the, the ultimate rejection from the Father. And he did it for our sake. Jesus was praying in the garden of Gethsemane on uh, uh, the night that he was betrayed. And, and this is a, a time that preceded him being hung on the cross. And, and we find that account in Luke 22. Turn there with me. Luke 22. We're going to read 40, 41st to the 41st, 4th verse. 40, Luke 22, 41 through 44. Luke 22, 41 through 44. And it reads, it says, and he was drawn, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away. And he knelt down and prayed, talking about Jesus, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of, of blood falling down to the ground. We go further down to the 63rd to the 64th verse. Statement in Luke 22. And it says, Now the men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him. And having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who's the one who struck you? And many other things. They blasphemy against him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, prior to, to Jesus being crucified on the cross, it was not a cakewalk for him. You know, it, it, and it's good for us to understand it and read it and look and meditate 
prayed and, and really think about the scriptures. He was persecuted. He was whipped. He was mocked. He was spat on. Hallelujah. All these things happened before he, before he even got to the cross in the mighty name of Jesus. In the garden, he asked the Father to take this cup from him, to let him not to have to experience what was coming on in the mighty name of Jesus. In Matthew, the 26th chapter, he, he asked for that cup to be taken away three times. Lord, you know, Father, take this cup from me. Hallelujah. And we just read in Luke that it was so intense that, that he sweated blood. Praise the Lord. Now turn to Matthew 27. And yes, we're going through the scripture because we have to know this for ourselves. Again, it's not about us quoting it, but know it, look it, and read it. Hallelujah. And when we go home, hallelujah, take it and, and, and read it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be a point of reference for something for you to read. Hallelujah. Matthew 27, 45 through 50. And it says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Say, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. And the scripture goes on to say, some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling on, calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on, on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let, let us see if Elijah will come to save us. And Jesus cried out again. He cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. That word cry in the Greek is, is a strong verb. It, it indicates a strong and powerful emotion or, or appeal to God. The scripture said he cried out in a loud voice. He, he wasn't passive about it. He expressed his emotions and, and about the situation and then willingly laid down his life in the mighty name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, one of the biggest deceptions that we have, hallelujah, is that we are not to express our emotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Man, woman, or child, suck it up. Suck it up. Why are you crying? Hallelujah. That is the biggest deception in the mighty name of Jesus. All throughout scripture, we see examples of it expressing their emotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let it out. We're also told to be quiet. But we don't see that in the word. Hallelujah. We're to be bold for God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But he cried out. That, that expression. Hallelujah. And, and, and the thing about I, I have to preface that again about the emotions. That yes, we need to let it out. We need to let it out. Not hold it in. But the, the thing that we see in scripture is that it out to God. Hallelujah. It's not done indiscriminately. You let it out to God and you don't allow yourself to, 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 to waddle in it in the mighty name of Jesus. But yes, you let it out. This and this person hurt my They did this and this and this and this and, and it made me feel this and this and this Lord. You let it out. Hallelujah. Otherwise the enemy will use it. You end up being a uh, man and somebody ain't got nothing to do with them but something to do way over here but you up here mad and frustrated in the mighty name of Jesus because you ain't just have chosen not to or didn't know how and sometimes it's not a choice again it's a lie it's the way we've been a uh, uh, top hallelujah to hold it in that it's a sign of, of strength you know we can handle it God will not put more on me than I can bear but you know what did God really put that on you or did you take it on to yourself in the mighty name of Jesus but we see that Jesus cried out with a loud voice hallelujah and that word forsaken it means to abandon desert leave in straits leave helpless totally abandoned utterly forsaken to leave behind to leave surviving in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I like that when it said that, that end, to leave surviving. How many of us have been left to, to survive, forsaken? Hallelujah. Been left to, to survive. We feel like we've been left to survive on this earth by ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Yet you claim you love me, but where are you at? In the mighty name of Jesus. Forsaken. Hallelujah. 
We see in the scripture that Jesus wasn't concerned about, about those who forsake him or rejected him before. He wasn't, he wasn't saying, he, he wasn't concerned about the family, the, the friends, or, or the, the community, or those who claimed to love him. He was concerned about all of that rejection that he experienced before. Jesus was concerned about being forsaken by the Father in the name of Jesus. When Jesus was asking for the cup to be to pass by him, he was referring to the anguish of being separated from the Father on the cross. For at that moment, on the cross, a holy transaction took place. God the Father regarded God the Son as if he were a sinner in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Or again, write it down. And this is being recorded, so if you need to refer back to it later, you can definitely do that. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus endured withdrawal from the, from, from, from the Father's fellowship. Plus the outpouring, hallelujah, of the Father's wrath as a substitute for sinful humanity. And you think about that, he, he experienced that agony in the mighty name of Jesus. And think about all of that stuff, hallelujah, that he took on for the sins of the world. He took on in the mighty name of Jesus. And as horrible as this was, it was a fulfillment of, of God's loving plan of redemption for you and I in the name of Jesus. And when you even just think about all that he took on and it endured, what more can we do? See, that, that's the point of it. What more can we do? Again, there is nothing that we can do that even compares in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not nothing, again, that, that, that we work for in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And, and what's interesting, and, and I'm going to make this point, we see this in, in 2 Corinthians. We're still there, just a few scriptures up, 519, hallelujah. We can't say that that separation, the separation that he experienced on the cross was a, a total separation because in the 19th verse, when you read back up, it says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself at the cross. Hallelujah. So there wasn't a total separation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what does this have to do with us? Absolutely everything. What does this have to us to do with us with respect about experiencing rejection from the Father, about experiencing the rejection? Absolutely everything. Hallelujah. Because again, Jesus experienced physical and, and, and more importantly, spiritual anguish in order for us to be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. He experienced it for us. For those who believe in him to, to be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. One of the things when I was preparing for this, I, I, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. We're going to, to pick it up again next week and, and we'll, we'll dwell uh, uh, even more because God had laid, laid it on my heart just to lay this, this foundation for us to see what happened with Jesus on the cross in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's actually the perfect place for us to take communion. But before we do this, before we do, I want to ask you to, to joining me and, and declaring just even a fraction of, of who we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Then we're going to take an, an invitation to accept salvation and we'll do communion. I promise you, we won't, we won't, go, we won't go very long in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I encourage you to again to say these declarations with me. If you want them again, they're they're on the back table of, of bookmarks of who I am statements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say who I am a holy partaker of a heavenly calling. I am hidden with Christ in God. I am an enemy of the devil. I am a child of God. And the evil one, the devil cannot touch me. I am one of God's living stones being built up in Christ as a spiritual house. I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, born anew in Christ to do his work. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if there's any of you, hallelujah, 
who is tired or, or, or just sick and tired of being sick and tired of, or if you felt like it, your life is great but don't know, uh, hallelujah, but know that there is more for you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. If you would like to accept Jesus to Christ as for the pardon of your sins, I encourage you to do just that in Jesus' name. If there's anyone, hallelujah, who's made a commitment at one time or another, hallelujah, but, but went off and, and, and started doing their own thing, hallelujah, I encourage you to, to rededicate your life to Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And for anyone, hallelujah, who falls into any of the categories, hallelujah. And you know what I want to say, even for, for those who happen in the mighty name of Jesus, it's just amazing declaring God's word over our lives, hallelujah. But I encourage you, uh, and specific, specifically those, if you fall into any of those categories, to repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge that I have sinned and that I cannot save myself. I believe that Jesus came to give me life. And by faith, I now choose to receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. May the power of your indwelling presence enable me to be the person you created me to be. I pray that you will grant me repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth so that I can experience my freedom in Christ and be transformed by the renewing of the mind. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. If anyone who prayed that prayer, I encourage you to find a church that preaches and teaches the word of God. You're welcome to join us here, but wherever you find yourself, hallelujah, know that, that you'll be welcome as long as it's a place that is founded on the rock of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let us prepare to take communion. Hallelujah, Father. Communion is a holy sacrament that we follow as Christ Jesus demonstrated over 2,000 years ago. Minister Anthony is going to read the scripture. Praise the Lord. For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Praise the Lord. Now let's just take a moment and examine ourselves and ask God to forgive us of any sins we've committed against him knowingly and unknowingly in Jesus' name. let us take the bread that represents the body and let us eat it together. Now hold up your cups and let us take the juice that represents the blood and repeat after me. Thanks be unto God, be unto God. who always calls us to triumph in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Now let us drink it together. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Minister Anthony, would you like to close us out in prayer? Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it
God, continue to watch over us. Continue to love you with all our hearts. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go with God.